Okay, if you watched my 8-6 uh, introduction video, which is my 6-H is help, which is attracting attention and also navigating out of help, navigating to get out of your situation or find help, um, I talked about this scenario. Well, I just talked about it. I didn't get into visuals or any, um, any uh, uh, diagram or whatnot with it. And, and what we're going to talk about today is a panic. Azimuth, all right, and I'll explain what azimuth is there, all right. An azimuth is the degree direction of where you want to go or wh what way you're going, okay. So right now, like if we're walking the direction this compass is going, if we're walking this exact direction, our azimuth would be about 12 degrees okay if we were walking at if I was walking that direction I was just facing I'd be walking 12 degrees that is my azimuth I'm heading okay if I'm standing here and there's a happy little tree right here and I want to walk to that tree I can pull out my compass I can shoot a direction to that tree there's me there's the tree and the direction okay it's going to be different and well, i'm not going to even quote you because it changed it was 30 degrees hold up here but the interference from the tables at about two at about 239 degrees okay so that that gives a difference but anyway just just say it was 239 degrees and i start walking do, 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 do. that's my azimuth that i'm walking on we'll discuss shooting an azimuth and walking an azimuth in another video um right now i want to talk on paddock azimuth and and the way the scenario I explained was an easiest way to keep yourself from getting lost in the woods, say you're going to head out, is to shoot a panic azimuth, okay? And the scenario I gave was here's my little house, all right? And there's a big lot of a few square miles of woods, okay? Maybe, maybe we'll, just, we'll just say five square miles of woods, all right? And I want to go explore that five square miles of woods. Now... And I know this road outside my house that I'm going to start on, that I'm going to cross to get into these woods. I know it runs for over 10 miles this direction and over 10 miles that direction. Okay. I know that there's a river that runs, you know, 20 miles to the, to the north or whatever direction this is. I know that there's a big, huge mountain range that runs to the west or whatever direction that is. Now I know there's another highway, another road that crosses that. So in this like five square mile area, it's boxed in, you know, because I prior planned, I looked at a map, okay? I looked at a map or I just know the area so well that I know this river runs to this next road, okay? And I know that this mountain range is all between these two roads. And then the rest of this is just all low, low woods, okay? To prevent myself from getting lost, and the losing my direction, to lose my bearing. Like I said, your bearing is knowing what direction is what, right? I'm gonna stand here at the road before I even walk into the woods and I'm gonna whip out my compass and I'm gonna shoot an azimuth, okay? I'm gonna shoot an azimuth for the direction I wanna go because the azimuth is what? The azimuth is where you wanna go. Now the azimuth, let's say the azimuth is north, which is zero degrees, right? Zero degrees. That little circle, if you didn't know, well, tiny circle is a circle for a symbol for degrees. So zero degrees. Well, the panic azimuth, and another name for the panic azimuth, is a back azimuth as well. What a back azimuth? They're actually two different things. So let me start over. And um, a panic. Actually, let me cross that out. No, I don't want to cross it out. I'll tell you what both of them are. If I'm heading out at zero degrees all right my back azimuth is going to be exactly the opposite of where i'm heading okay there's three ways that you can do to figure that out if i know my compass is pointing zero degrees which it's not because the table's interfering but we're just going to pretend the compass is facing zero degrees i can look at the compass and see what's exactly opposite kind of like this compass here has a needle has a south so I know what exactly the opposite is and it'll say it's 180 degrees because 
on your compass, the zero degrees is north, and it's a circle, and on the bottom, which is south, is 180 degrees, all right? So that's one way I can do it. Or I could turn around. I'm standing, say I'm standing right here on the face in the front of my house, and I'm heading away from my house. I could turn around and face my house and see what the heading is. And sure enough, since it's directly south or directly the opposite, it's going to say 180 degrees. Or another way you could do it, if you're the mathematician and you just like doing math for fun in your head because you're weird, if the azimuth you're heading is between zero and 180 degrees, you can add 180 degrees to get your azimuth. All right. If it's between 180 and 360 degrees, you subtract 180 to get your degrees. You can figure out the math on your own. It does exactly the same thing. It'll tell you exactly the same thing. If I'm facing zero degrees north and I add 180, it gives me 180, which is exactly directly behind me, okay? Now, the object behind that back azimuth, all right? If I go walking, I go walking out here. I like different colors. I go walking. Da, 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 something happens all the way over here. Okay, I fall down, get disoriented, get knocked out. It gets dark. I can't see where I'm going, or something happens where I lose my bearing. I can't figure out which way I'm going. All right. If I remember what my back azimuth was and I already knew what the terrain was, I cannot get lost, okay? I know there's a mountain range over here, okay? So I know I didn't get to that mountain range yet. I know there's a river over here. I know I didn't get to that river here yet. And I know I didn't get to this road yet. And all I seen was woods, okay? But I've already looked at my map. And when, before I headed out, I shot a back azimuth. So I know all I have to do is pick myself up, dust myself off, stop crying, whip out my compass, it's dark and I can't see nothing maybe it's dark and you can't see that mountain range and it's dark you won't see that that road off in the distance well I'll pick up my compass get my bearing figure out where north is figure out what direction I'm facing and then I'll turn until I'm facing 180 degrees okay and when I'm facing 180 degrees I'll be pointing this way and then I'll walk staying on that bearing if I fall again, I get back up and reshoot 180 degrees until I hit that road. And I already know that that road runs for over 10 miles to the west of my house and 10 miles to the east of my house. So all I got to try to do is remember, okay, cool. I know I hit it to the west as I was walking or to the east as I was walking. So all I got to do is walk that way and get to my house. Okay. Now, what the pan, that's the back azimuth, okay. That's the back azimuth, what we just did. Now I'll discuss the panic azimuth, since I wrote that down mistakenly. You're going to get two lessons for the price of one. A panic azimuth. A panic azimuth is just a different, either one or numerous numbers that you remember, degrees that you remember in case something does happen. All right. One of those panic azimuths, as we already figured out, was 180 degrees. So we know that wherever we are here, if we didn't cross these features, we can go 180 degrees and get to that road. That's a panic azimuth. We also know that river runs the whole entire direction to the, to the west. Well, west is 90 degrees, right? Because if, if north is zero degrees, a 90 degree turn takes us to the east and we know we hit that river. One eight, um, so well, that could be another panic asthma. You know, okay, if I get lost out here somewhere, I'm just going to shoot 90 degrees until I hit that river, hit that river, walk south until I get to my road, and then walk back up to my house. And you could do the same thing for um, for any place. Okay, and we'll, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss panic asthma and a, a little bit more when we do, do map reading because they can also help with map reading. And when you see a whole map, it makes a lot more sense. Um, but that's what the back azimuth is. If you shoot a back azimuth and you walk and you know your terrain, that's what I said in the H6 video, 
most important thing for you to do is do some research look at a map take a map with you or draw a map if you don't have a printer look at the Google map and just sketch it out all right there ain't an inch of this earth that you know, isn't on Google Maps um, some might not be as zoomed in as others but you'll still see major rivers and major roads major train features a big town up here in this corner okay as long as you know okay I got five ten square miles of woods I'm heading into but I know my road is all the way to the south of those woods those woods end at a river at the east those roads those woods end at a mountain range to the west those roads you know, that woods ends at another road to the north or a highway or another river a big town you can't get lost because all you have to do is shoot that back azimuth and hoof it all the way back to that road all right so okay like i said this ends the uh, the first video of my uh, introduction to uh compasses and uh compass navigation and like i said you know if you're familiar with compasses you know this series is not going to be something that's going to entertain you uh you know it will each each video will be titled you know basics or introduction or compass basics compass for beginners or whatnot um today in this video all i did was go over a couple description of a couple different compasses uh the differences between them what you can use some for uh uh, what you can use some for and what you can't use some for uh, what to look for when you're buying compasses uh, things to look out for when you're using it as in the metal being inside a compass like this little compass tool um, you know where the metal being around we showed how the, the metal interferes even with this table uh, interferes with the compass so we talked about that we talked about how to gain our bearing to figure out what direction is north, south, and east, and west. That's what bearing is. We talked a little bit about shooting azimuth. We'll do that in the next video. Um, about shooting an actual azimuth. But we did talk about a back azimuth. And how to use that back azimuth to uh, keep ourselves from getting lost in our little scenario here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are a first time or a, a never time user of a compass. Uh, I hope this series uh, is instructional and uh, informative to you i uh, hope you learn from it if you at all get confused about anything you know shoot me a personal message you know um uh don't try to i don't want to do any conversations so to speak in comments but if you do have a serious question about something i discussed or something that's that uh you're confused about or even a question about different compasses or what you know please do give me a personal message and i'll get to you uh, as soon as i can and um I hope you keep a, an eye out for the next video, and I hope you watch along, and uh, I hope you learn something. Uh, I want to pass these skills out to you, so uh, that, that's my focus. And like I said, this is a beginner's class uh, for those who have never used compasses before. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry I'm speaking with Earthwalk Primitive.